everyone. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the basic operation of a computer. We'll talk about the basic components and how they fit together. So let's go ahead and get started. The first component we'll talk about is the motherboard. This is the baseline component that gives structure to the computer. The motherboard allows components to be secured to it and gives it basic power for operation. Later in this lesson, we'll look at a picture of an actual motherboard that will give you a good idea of the components uh, and how they're secured to the motherboard. The next major component is the power supply, and it does exactly what you would think it would do. It supplies power to the motherboard. Uh, typically, a power supply may also have a fan uh, for cooling. Um, it will have various uh, outputs from the, from the uh, power supply or, or, or modular connectors that can connect to various places onto the motherboard. It can also then supply power to uh, components such as uh, hard drives and other components that are plugged into the computer. And so it, it typically has a modular type of plug or connector that can be um, used to attach to the various components to, to supply them power. The next component is the system bus. The system bus is one of the fundamental components that allows all the computer's components to communicate with each other. Integral to the system bus is the system clock which coordinates and times all the operations for the computer. These two components work together to make sure all the operations are properly synchronized. The faster the clock speed for a computer, um, the better for you. Uh, it's the, it will, uh, on each clock uh, cycle, a computer executes instructions. And so the faster that clock cycle is, the more work the com computer can get done. So typically the faster the clock speed, the better off and the faster the computer will operate. The next major component is the central processing unit or CPU. The CPU is really the brain of the computer and performs all the mathematical computations necessary to operate programs on the computer. Uh, much of the speed of the computer is determined again by the clock speed and the processing capabilities of the central processing unit. Newer central process, newer CPUs will have multiple cores and so what that means is it's almost like having multiple CPUs on the computer and that will allow uh, programs to operate in, in much more of a parallel fashion. So the more cores on the CPU, the faster the computer is uh, because it can get more work done. It, it can do things in parallel. System memory is a place where programs are loaded so that they can be executed. The system memory is also referred to as RAM for random access memory. The amount of RAM and the size and the speed of the system bus also work together to determine the speed of the computer. If you have more RAM, you'll be able to load more programs into memory and the computer can get more work done. Uh, if you don't have enough RAM and you run lots of programs, uh, the, the programs will have to be swapped in and out of system memory from the hard disk and this is a slow operation. So many times this is why um, if your uh, computer is operating slowly, uh, many people suggest to add more RAM. It really doesn't make the computer faster, but it does allow it to do more work. So if you're operating lots of programs at the same time, having more RAM will facilitate that. The next item we'll talk about is the disk controller. The disk controller synchronizes operations with storage devices such as hard disks or DVD drives. On the motherboard there will be a socket where a cable can connect to connect the motherboard to a particular hard drive or DVD drive. So larger computers or desktop computers may have multiple hard drives or DVD drives. And so the uh, capacity of this is driven by the disk controller and the number of sockets on the motherboard. The next item we'll talk about is the video controller. On some computers, the video, uh, the video card or video capability is integrated into the motherboard and there's really no separate uh, uh, connection for this. On a lot of desktop computers, however, um, the video controller interfaces via a card that's plugged into the back of the computer. So you'll have a graphics or a video card that can plug in. And these video cards can have different capabilities. So uh, particularly for those interested in, in gaming and high-end graphics, uh, the, you can buy a higher-end uh, graphics card that's uh, much more capable of rendering um, graphics uh, much faster, so it's a lot better for gaming and can drive higher resolution devices. So 
but the video controller sits between um, your computer and the motherboard and your monitor and will uh, dictate the capabilities that you'll have for display. The last component we'll talk about are input and output ports. Uh, these are located typically on the back of the computer and you can hook up external devices with these. Uh, most devices today uh, use a universal serial bus or USB ports to connect. So you can connect devices such as printers, keyboards, and modems. Um, uh, ultimately, if you connect a modem, uh, like a DSL modem or a cable modem, then that's your pathway out to the internet. So that's the last major component we'll look at on the components on a motherboard. So if you look at the picture below, this is what a typical motherboard looks like. This would be for a desktop computer. Uh, noted below is the source where uh, I, I uh, have downloaded the picture from. So some of the highlights, uh, you'll, you'll notice that there's a, um, a CPU uh, connector, a CPU socket. This is where the central processing unit chip would plug into the motherboard. Uh, so it depends uh, what type of socket that is, what type of CPU that the, that, that would support. Um, the next item to look at is where the, um, the, the DIMM uh, memory, that's a slot where memory sticks would plug in. So this would be the system memory that we talked about on the, on the previous slide. Some of the connectors then, the SATA connector would be for a, uh, a hard drive connection. So you'll see that in the picture as well. And then some of the slots, the PCI slots that are, that are referenced here. This would be uh, some slots that cards could plug in. And in, in, in the previous slide, we talked about a, a video controller and a graphics card that would be plugged in into the PCI slot. And then on the back of the computer, then are the uh, input output connectors that we talked about. So you'll see support for um, plugging in a ethernet uh, uh, cable for a local uh, local area network and then you also see USB connectors for universal serial bus connectors that we talked about as well. So that's it. This concludes our brief look at the components of a computer and how they fit together. Hopefully this will give you a good idea of the major components of a computer and how they operate. That's really it for this lesson. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.